Osmosis Jones is about a society that is under attack from a deadly virus that disguises itself as a common cold and thrives inside the bodies of unhealthy individuals while a pompous, narcissistic politician with bad hair ignores experts about the very dire circumstances as said society crumbles around him and instead is more focused on his re-election. People, people, you worry too much. The body is in perfect shape. Are the words about a pandemic at this point? No, we're not at all, and uh, we're, we have it totally under control. This movie uh, came out in 2001. Yeah. So the people who made this movie are <laughs> prophets. Yeah. They foretold, why, did, why didn't we listen? Why didn't we listen to Osmosis Jones? Osmostradamus over here. <laughs> this is your big plan? A sore throat? A stuffy nose? People are just going to think... Oh. A common cold. Until I make my move, that's precisely what I want them to think. I think it's very interesting watching this movie, how kind of weirdly prevalent it was. And seeing the daughter crying that her dad is dying on the table because of some stupid decisions. Yes. One thing that gets lost a lot is that it's not about you. It's about so you don't carry it and give it to someone else. Yeah. That's the point. That theme definitely comes through at it, the end. It hits a lot harder now than yeah. it did then. Get vaccinated, y'all. Making stuff is hard, especially in the entertainment world when there are millions of dollars on the line. And we are going to talk about these disastrous, never-ending, and sometimes dangerous productions. This is The Shit Show. Hello, everybody. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> body. Okay, wait, wait, wait. It's wait, about bodies. Wait. Hello, everybody. <laughs> that make more sense? Wham. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes and no. Shut up. I got it. <laughs> uh, my name is Ian. I am joined by Clint. Hello. And Ray. Hello. And this body is a shit show. So. How- what? How dare you? <laughs> My body is slamming. <laughs> Jeez, speak for yourself. I, I didn't, there was no pointing involved. Uh, <laughs> today we'll be discussing Osmosis Jones. You may be wondering why this movie. <laughs> I know, when you told me the homework, like Osmosis Jones, like I had to like do a double take. I was like, okay, wait, what? Are we, are we, <laughs> Osmosis who now? I was like, he's, I, I, I showed Lisa, like, he wants me to watch Osmosis Jones. And she's like, What's Osmosis Jones? It's like it's it's from 2001. I was like, I think like Chris uh, Chris Rock's in it, David Hyde Pierce, and she's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I was like, Yeah, I remember seeing like parts of it. Yeah. yeah. Did you watch it with the kids? No, I I watched it with Lisa. She's like, It's a good thing I've got a book because this movie is <laughs> not good. <laughs> she's like, This is a weird movie. The kids do not want to watch it. It um, is well, a weird movie. I, 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 not that like I'm not gonna like put this on you like you didn't give me enough time but like I like there were so many other things going on like yeah, yeah, kids yeah. like I didn't have time like I literally watched it like two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we watched it on a whim uh, the other day. I was just like, oh, I love this movie, and I turned it on, and then as I was just kind of uh, watching it, I looked up on Wikipedia to see if it if it had shit show-ness to it and it had um <laughs> and the first line was just like it was in development hell for all these reasons blah 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 blah, blah. and it so- cited nobody it had no source in there and i was like well i can't do that and and so then i just went down this rabbit hole of trying to find if any of this stuff held water eventually i did find a bunch of really old articles from 20 years ago um <laughs> the the Internet is kind of hard to search for articles that old, and a lot of places keep that stuff behind paywalls and stuff. Anyway, ugh. But I discovered a bunch of stuff. So, yes, it was kind of in development hell for a little while. And uh, instead of doing something like we could have done Green Lantern uh, to kind of tie in with what we were talking about last week, uh, whatever. But <laughs> yeah, this this felt like it came completely out of left, left field. field. So, <laughs> this okay. was a wild, wild okay. choice. So let's let's see. 
Osmosis Jones is about a society that is under attack from a deadly virus that disguises itself as a common cold and thrives inside the bodies of unhealthy individuals while a pompous, narcissistic politician with bad hair ignores experts about the very dire circumstances as said society crumbles around him and instead is more focused on his re-election. This movie oh. came out in 2001. Yeah. So the people who made this movie are fucking prophets. Yeah. They foretold, why, did, why didn't we listen? Why didn't we listen to Osmosis Jones? Osmostradamus over here. Good one. Nostradamosis Jones. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, yeah, we were, uh, we were watching it, and he just kept looking at me like, oh my are God. You, are, can you believe how prescient all of this is? And I was just like, yeah, man, this shit, this is crazy. This shit's crazy. It's very, it's very COVID, like related to COVID. Adjacent. Or very, COVID, <laughs> COVID adjacent, adjacent. Yeah. yeah. So is, was Drake's like hydroxychloroquine, or is he, <laughs> or is he more effective yeah, than that? No, no. Yeah. yeah, and Thrax is. I we just throughout the when we were watching it, we were just like, just name him COVID for yeah. the rest of the movie. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this movie, no, I, I had the same thought where I was just like, Osmosis Jones, okay, well, whatever. I like old, weird movies from my childhood to talk about on this podcast because it's more, to me, it's more fun. But yeah, no, it, it feels really relevant. Yeah. Uh, it's also the 20th anniversary almost to the month. So Oh, there's, there you there go. You, there you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just trying that, to make it. You guys, I promise. I, I promise there's a reason for us doing this. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's going to be funny. It's going to be funny us. for people who follow us on Instagram to like scroll through like how, because I love how we do our Instagram with the three photos that line up. So as they're <laughs> looking through our feed, it's going to be either they're going to see this great movie, you know, like Alien. <laughs> These uh, big movies. Yeah, big Deadpool. movies. Deadpool. And all of a sudden, Osmosis, Osmosis Jones. They'll be like, what the hell? Jones. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's going to be people out there who's like, oh, I love this movie. Yeah. So what was it like playing the sick guy in this film? Uh, well, it was pretty easy, really. Um, you know, there was a, we were in a town and where, you know, there were a lot of people watching out of curiosity. So if you just... If you saw people just sort of be a little horrified at you, you know you're, you knew you were doing it fine. And what did you think about the whole animation combined with the real life stuff going on? I that was a pretty good idea. I, I often don't like the way that gets done, but I thought this one was going to be good. I haven't seen it yet, so I, I'm just lying whatever answer I give you. Had either of you seen this when it came out? You just you just said you've never you only I, saw like bits and pieces. I think I have, but maybe just the once, and it had to have been 20 years ago to the month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's I. The last time I saw, I was 16, and I was watching it on a real shit TV in Greece with Greek subtitles. Oh, really? That took up. Oh, light. that's right. You said that. Yeah, yeah. You know, we were teenagers, so any cartoon was a. Uh, because that had to have watch been worthy. That had to have. Because when did you go to Greece? 2004. Okay. Uh, I remember actually wanting to see the movie, and I think I saw it in the drive-in, and I thoroughly enjoyed it then, and that's why I had fond memories. Because I think I saw it after. Um, it came to DVD or whatever mm -hmm. again. And so I remember there's just a handful of jokes that always just kind of stick in the back of my mind every time. Uh, anytime someone says the word pandemonium, I think of Osmosis Jones. <laughs> um, because at the time, I didn't know what that word meant <laughs> when I right. saw it. And so when the part where he eats like the animal crackers and it's pandemonium in the stomach right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> dude, dude, this movie had... Excellent body-based puns. I was so happy. I was so fucking happy. I know it was. I good. love puns so much. It really, I, I did like the puns. I liked <sighs> um, how they were able. Like it's the city of Frank, and <laughs> yeah, it was like it was like gross because like all this weird, gross bodily fluid, you know, function <laughs> stuff. But like it, it made sense, and I liked how they were able to like match it up with like the real world mm -hmm. like white blood cells are obviously going to be the police, the police force yeah right? yeah but the thing that really just kind of like that bugged me is that and i would never have picked this up as a kid but now that i'm like you know a late a mid 30s woke millennial quote you know <laughs> like all the germs and the bad guys were like ethnic oh mm -hmm. that were invading the body I mean, there was the germs that that Drix like froze, and he was oh oh yeah and he had, like, oh a oh very like the more like stereotypical like cartoon Mexican accent yeah okay yeah, yeah okay they're, yeah. they're yeah the those ones okay that's I it, see what you mean by that it felt very like anti um, immigration a little bit like and oh like, they're sneaking in here the funny thing about that too is you know at the time that they made that none of that even crossed their mind that they're not they weren't even <laughs> yeah. thinking like this yeah. is going to be offensive 
you know. Uh, no, you actually commented on that. You like you said you're like, oh, the germs are like the Mexicans trying to get across the border. Yeah, because Again, that one germ, twenty years. Yeah, that one germ <laughs> just had like that that super like stereotypical offensive. Uh, um, what's that little character's name? The like little mouse that runs fast. Oh, Speedy Gonzalez. Speedy Gonzalez. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like a Speedy Gonzalez voice. Yeah. Oh, no, not again. I just, yeah. I did, I didn't want to step on any toes, and so <laughs> I, I only read some of the trivia in IMDb, and they said the reason why they cast David Hyde Pierce is because they wanted to find the whitest white person that they could. Yeah, I was oh, just yeah. watching. I was watching the <laughs> to, uh, to be the pill to, to be, be the, the pill. cold medicine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But I liked. He the... was already cast when the the when he when he came in, and the producer was like said that to the director and was like, oh, I understand why you uh, cast him. He's the whitest guy that's ever existed. <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> okay, so um, before we get started, I want to point out that this is when I was sitting there doing the research on this. So we're going we're gonna to focus on two different topics. We're going to focus on uh, Osmosis Jones, and then we're going to take a detour through uh, Warner Brothers animation. Um but as I was doing all this research, it was crazy to me how much of, as I was reading through this, how much it tied into all of our previous episodes. Oh, really? <laughs> so as we go through. How many lunches were there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many lunches? Seven lunches <laughs> worth. So so count how many times uh, we reference an earlier episode of a shit show. Yeah, we haven't done a Roar reference for a while. <laughs> oh, so my God. We, we, we haven't talked about Peter Sohn in a long time. Yeah. Was that guy, did he work for Warner <laughs> Brothers Animation? <laughs> If his, if his names come up, I'm going to shit my pants. <laughs> That's going to be amazing. <laughs> That's going to be so good. Um, yeah, so play along at home. There's no prize. Um, we, we're not going to keep score. <laughs> Every time we make an old episode reference, you got to take a drink. <laughs> Starting right off the bat, we got two in a row here. Uh, so this is mostly about Mark Hyman, which... That's kind of a funny name for the fact that this movie is all bodily. Anyway. What are you um, implying? <laughs> What's, I'm sorry, what's the joke? <laughs> <laughs> Please tell us more about anatomy. Well, tell us more about this Hyman. <laughs> so Mark Hyman was script coordinator on a TV show set in the college years. Oh Saved my God, by the was Bell? it Saved by the Saved Bell? By the Bell. Oh my Shut God. Your goddamn mouth. He loved his teacher. <laughs> It's all coming together. So he was a script Pepe coordinator. Pepe Sylvia. <laughs> yeah. This was his first like big uh, big gig. So that's where he got his start. And then he was a writer on All That. Um, mm-hmm. And then Sweet Valley High. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The book. Okay. Well, I mean, I remember the books. Okay. So he, uh, he was doing kind of those lower end <laughs> TV shows. Anyway, so he sells, Hyman sells his first feature script called Osmosis Jones to Warner Brothers in 1997. And he wanted to make sure all the characters were true to their bodily function, as you kind of mentioned, even though, as he says, he only had like a seventh grade understanding of the body. Right. But <laughs> poop <laughs> comes out the bum. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> at seventh grade, <laughs> that's why there's yeah. That's why that's there that are some. That's why there. Well, are I mean, some... I was leading up to it. I mean, there's more to it, obviously. <laughs> Maybe um, I was thinking more of seven year old. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I mean, but I feel like in seventh seventh grade, what you're 13, you don't have that much more of a better understanding of the body <laughs> than a seven year old. Um. So he. It, does, it takes like another two years for Warner Brothers to put the film into production in June of 1999. And um, they get animation. The animation will be directed by Tom Sitto and Pete Crone. Sitto. Not sewn. Not sewn. <laughs> no. no. Um, Sitto was an artist on He-Man, Fat Albert, the Ghostbusters. Uh, the Ghostbusters or the real Ghostbusters? Like the animated Ghostbusters? The real Ghost- Ghostbusters. Oh, like, the animated like Ghostbusters? The animated one. So he was Full doing like circle. all those, these TV shows. Uh, he was an animator during the De- Disney Renaissance. <gasps> uh, he worked on Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Lion King. Um, left with Katzenberg, Jeffrey Katzenberg, uh, to yeah. DreamWorks. DreamWorks. Worked on Prince of Egypt. Shrek, Spirit. Um, Damn. Pete, Pete Crone was an animator on Five Goes West and a storyboard artist on Quest for Camelot and Iron Giant, which we will discuss in a bit. Oh, Quest for Camelot. That's the only, I've never seen it. I just always remember it from the poster. It has the two-headed dragon. Oh, yes. yep, 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 yep. Okay. 
Okay, we're going to talk about that movie later. All right, so it's also produced by Zach Penn. Um, we've met, I've mentioned him in my Avengers video. He originally wrote, was writing uh, The Hulk and then was going to write Avengers before Joss Whedon took over. Mm. Um, the script is about the city of Frank inside the body of a construction worker. So that's what it was originally uh, pitched as. Um, and they were currently in negotiations with Will Smith to star. As Frank? As, no. Uh, as Osmosis. As Osmosis. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so it was always written as like half real life, yes, half live animated. action hybrid. Okay. Yeah. Uh, animated hybrid. Yep. Gotcha. Um, they also, at the exact time, they were like, this is going to be awesome. We're going to love this. Uh, so they greenlit 13 episodes for kids, exclamation point, WB, with mm. the same characters <laughs> and world. Uh, so they were really kind of like, this This is going to take off. They were all in on osmosis. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're all in. <laughs> uh, in August, <laughs> Will Smith backs out. And then Chris Rock is cast along with David High Pierce. Did it mention why Will Smith backed out? Uh, no, I couldn't find any reason. Maybe it was scheduling. I don't. I'm, I'm that's not sure. the, that's what I read on the IMDb trivia was scheduling conflicts. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, Zach Penn. Um, so he was. He's been a writer for ages, and uh, he did a lot of the X Men movies. Uh, worked did a, a uncredited rewrite on Ants. Uh, and he's done everything from mm. Ready Player One. All of our favorites. Yeah. The yeah. X-Men's and the and <laughs> yeah. Ants. And Ready uh, Player One was fun, though. I'll give him that. Anyway, <laughs> Ready Player One and Free Guy. What? Uh, okay. As his first. <laughs> you guys. You guys. This is wild. <laughs> his first sold script was Last Action Hero. Oh, God. That's such a good movie. <laughs> It's <laughs> <laughs> a good movie. And but he wrote the original draft of it, but it was immediately given to Shane Black, mm -hmm. who did all his rewrites, and he was kind of kicked to the curb. Like, and so it was kind of like his all original idea, and all he got was a story credit. So he didn't, he wasn't involved with anything else. <laughs> so, does he have a T-shirt that says "I went to Warner Brothers and all I got was a lousy story credit"? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, because Zach Penn got kicked off that movie. And he was he was gonna this was his first time producing and he was gonna produce Osmosis Jones. He wanted to make sure that Mark Hyman was involved all the way through. And so Mark Hyman actually wrote every uh, draft of this of this film. And Zach Penn said like if they put it to other screenwriters, it would have cost them upwards to like another three four million. Mm. Um, and so Mark Hyman is the only writer on this entire movie. Wow, um, which is very rare. They are two years into production, two years of animation work, Jeez. and they still don't have anybody to do the live action segments. They do not have director. They don't have actors at all. So they went full hog into the animation with no plan for yeah. <laughs> the other like, bits. Ah, that live action bullshit's easy. <laughs> we'll we gotta get the, well, we're gonna, we got to get this the animation. <laughs> That's what we got to figure yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it's 75% of the movie. So I guess like they'll eventually figure it out. And I don't know what took them so long to kind of put this one together. But at some point they they go, oh, uh, Peter and Bobby Fairley, who just did Dumb and Dumber, Kingpin, Something about Mary, me, myself, and Irene, <laughs> really gross out comedies, mm -hmm. like, uh, and they were all huge hits. So um, it's like perfect. That would be perfect for all the, the live action uh, shit. They're like, who do we know in Hollywood who's just like really fucking gross? gross. Like, who are the, the grossest <laughs> yeah. dudes? Who makes like who who are the dudes we know that make just really gross movies? <laughs> Those just fairly brothers. You know, just a step step below trauma. Like let's get this. Like, let's get a step below them because they're gross. And this is yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Mark Hyman goes to lunch with the Fairley brothers uh, to pitch him the movie. Peter Fairley says it was the worst pitch he had ever heard, and assumed Hyman was a fraud that he was just fucking around to get a bunch of money and leave town. Oh, shit! <laughs> wow, that was not a successful lunch. <laughs> That was not, yeah. not like those other lunches. Not like, not like, not like the I mean, that, that lunch would... These deals, they are... They, the crux of the deal is on the lunch. <laughs> on the the lunch. lunches are where it, the magic happens. Yeah. So luckily, Fairley's manager um, convinces them, forget that, read his script. Yeah. And they loved it. 
Like they were like, holy shit, like this is legitimate. Like this is really fucking good. And, um, and That's so, so funny. Like, how is he so bad at pitching? I don't know. How it's did like, you, how did you like sell a, it to Warner Brothers? Yeah. And then maybe, maybe he was kind of starstruck like, in front of them or yeah. something. Maybe. maybe. But like pitching's bad a bad day. A real, yeah. Yeah. That's true. He, I guess he walks a into it. Like, gone wrong. <laughs> Big gulps, huh? <laughs> Well, see you later. I mean, here's my pitch. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. But he was not impressive in that moment. They give the script, uh, the Fairley brothers give the script to their parents who are a doctor and a nurse uh, to see if any of the bodily concepts held water. Those are, and by and the they way, did. That's funny. That's too funny. <laughs> that's amazing. But also, I think those have to be two of the most disappointed parents of all time. <laughs> <laughs> doctor they're like we're distinguished professionals in the medical field and we have these two lousy kids making <laughs> making fart out, movies making fart joke movies i can't so believe they made a movie where they killed a bird and taped its head together and gave it to a blind kid <laughs> um so so they so they gave the script to the the, the, the doc- doctor and they were like doctor yeah Fairley. actually this all makes sense like this actually kind of works hmm. So it's actually quite helpful to understand so like science, how like your you body guys. works. Yeah. Like your body works. It's like, well, yeah. we got dust coming in the nose. Fire the goo. She's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's where boogers oh, come from. Boogers are to help clear like irritants <laughs> out of your nasal cavity. <laughs> yeah. See, these are the movies we should have been watching in health class as kids. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Like, <laughs> it's listen. Just, like, just ask me questions after the movie's yeah. over. Just <laughs> like it's entertainment, but it's also it's edutainment. Yeah. These yes, are, Chris is... Rock lives in your body. <laughs> You're full of tiny Chris rocks that are getting germs out of you. Some of you have hymens. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite joke was when they're like, uh, he's heading towards the dangly thing. He's like, ah, oh, the boxer shorts. He's, he's like, no, not no, no, that no. dangly thing. <laughs> the uvula. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, where are you going? Well, south of the border. <laughs> oh, that, not those dangly things. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed so hard at that. That was so good. There's a lot of adult humor in this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's like a whole bunch of stuff in there that like like I said, it, I think it's way funnier as an adult than it was as a as kid because it was yeah. just so much like the pun work, as you were saying. <sighs> just mwah, just chef's kiss <laughs> pun work. Oh, so good. Um, but then so uh, Peter Fairley calls Hyman and says, okay, they're in. We'll do it. But don't ever pitch again. <laughs> yeah. You're done. <laughs> um, he's like, just stop having lunches <laughs> you're more of a brunch kind of you're a, guy. a brunch guy <laughs> yeah. you're, you're a breakfast we guy. need a couple of mimosas in us before <laughs> yeah. we could listen to your pitch to your pitch yeah. so january will you be our peter fairly and what does he sound like, <laughs> that, like just, that? just generic white guys <laughs> then, and then he clint fart. Be bob <laughs> bobby um bobby so they uh so they get started and they instantly think of Bill Murray for the role of Frank. We would make every movie with Bill Murray, actually, but he's hard to get on the phone. Which is kind of funny because we've talked about that's like, true. How yeah, he yeah. doesn't have an agent and you have to just call him and yeah. hope he <laughs> so, answers. Sometimes he'll just show up on your movie. Yeah, well, and, that, and that's the big thing, right? Without with even Bill Murray, if we don't know if he'll that's actually no show up. Bobby? Oh, sorry. Yeah, the script that Mark Hyman wrote is great. And we thought if that's not Bill, then what is? We were lucky to get him. He doesn't care what he looks like. <laughs> like this guy's a disgusting fat slob. <laughs> he eats like shit. He's just like, he's a walking like human Petri dish. Bill Murray. That guy does not give a fuck. Well, continue. <laughs> he's the most ego-free actor out there, which is always what made him so funny. So he showed up with the pot belly and somehow despite how he looks in this movie, he wasn't in really bad shape because he played hoops every day for an hour and a half, which scared me at the time because I thought he's going to drop dead of a heart attack. This guy is in really bad shape and he's running full court, but he wasn't in bad shape. He gained 25 pounds, but he never stopped working out somehow. <laughs> That is fucking impressive. Talent. That is great. That is talent. Um, I would just also like for the record to state that I'm also in very good shape despite <laughs> this. The aforementioned slam and body. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm also deceptively in great shape. Which is I, I I tried to go on a hike. 
I, I can't do it. Oh, yeah. That'll like the end up. of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, a, it was a long walk from the car. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Granted, we just came from brunch where I had down to Bloody Mary, but like. Yeah. Uh huh. It was the Bloody Mary. I was wrong. 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 This hike is shit. <laughs> this is high as bullshit. This is bullshit. Why is it so hot right now? It's sweaty. <laughs> That was another bloody bear. <laughs> Making it on the trail. <laughs> <laughs> Foraging for wild um, celery. celery and uh, ba- bacons. So the Ziploc bag full of bacon. <laughs> wild seen- olives on a skewer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Bill Murray, Chris Rock, David Hyde Pierce, Molly Shannon, and Chris Elliott all were allowed to just improv a lot, um, which at times was actually kind of difficult because the it, it was fine for the voice actors because they could just animate to that. But for the onset live action shit, they were like, yeah, but you still need to hit here to here because we have to get, get the transitions correct. Yeah, they're still bookend. <laughs> yeah, was, like, you guys, we're still making a fucking movie, okay? Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> again, the most pissed off script supervisor of all time, just like throwing their sheets in the air, just like, fuck, you guys, you guys. Come on. This still has to tie in with like the fucking plot, okay? <laughs> I always wonder about that. Like you have the script, right? And, mm-hmm. and, and after the movie comes out and then like the studios want to make some more money. It's like, here's, you know, buy the official script. You know, like buy some merch. Like mm-hmm. do they just like rewrite the script? Right? It's <laughs> yeah. The movie? It's like, yeah, yeah, they do. But yeah, no, getting um getting a, pre- a pre-produced script is actually fairly difficult. Like the version that they go into production with. Right. Because they don't usually release those because there's like rewrites and changes and imp- improvs and things that happen. Gotcha. Yeah, because some of those will be like very, like very different. My uh, my first year of college, I was a theater major, and part of the reason why I actually didn't pursue acting, besides the fact that I have zero charisma and can't act, <laughs> uh, is that I could not. I hated memorizing lines. Like That's it, a really important part of it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And also, I, I, and ter- also I'm, having I'm ter- charisma. Yeah, I have, yeah. <laughs> I had, I, Especially for, like, it's one thing for movies where it's like they could cut around that shit. Yeah. <laughs> you, on the theater stage. Yeah, on the stage. Yeah, I hated it. So that's why I started doing improv instead. Uh-huh. I also could not uh, act, but I was super good at memorizing. Nerd. And I'm very charismatic. <laughs> I am, so. yeah. So they they had to like make sure all the, the everything fit together and um, Sido and uh, Crone Sone Crone 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 Peter Sone <laughs> Crone got along really well with the Fairly Brothers like uh, they both really so those in- are the two dudes that are directing the animation the animated sequence portion. yes okay right so. Seventy five percent of the movie. Right. <laughs> right. Um So they got along real well with the Fairly Brothers. Yes. And uh they were mostly on set all the time, uh, with Bill Murray and whatnot. And so they were very involved with making sure it flowed nicely. Mm-hmm. Uh the Fairly Brothers rarely rarely went to the animation studio. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like those nerds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're making a we're over here making real movies. <laughs> <laughs> with snot jokes and throw up and <laughs> with bloody toenails with real oh, stars. God. Okay, um, zit scene. Speak. Okay, speaking of which, I can't even think about it. Don't <laughs> don't talk about it. Don't even talk about it. The original cut of the movie was no. rated PG thirteen because of the live action stuff. <laughs> they had to cut down the bloody toenail when he oh, throws it up on the tail. So gross. <laughs> when he vomits on the teacher. And the zip pop. Um, that zip pop is so it's so disgusting. It's so, I seriously like when that happened. Like I seriously, I was dry heaving. I was getting like <laughs> Jenny Ray yeah. closed her eyes. I closed my eyes. I made eye. her he, go. I made her go back and watch he, it when it explodes. He's a monster. I literally closed my eyes. Like I, I don't want to watch this. And he, and then he was like. Did you miss it? And I'm like, yes. I closed my eyes, and he's like, no, you have to watch it. And I was like, no. It's so, so he it fucking looks rewinds so it. So cool. It's <laughs> like, disgusting. What they pulled off was really, really cool. The thing that was really disturbing to me, right? So they're in in the club in the zit, right? What was it called? Just it was called like the zit. The yeah. Zit. Yeah. They're like, oh, the zit on the forehead. <laughs> the forehead. <laughs> so they're in the club, right? And they're all dancing. I thought that actually was a pretty hilarious metaphor, where it's just like. It's just like, oh, hey, this like new nightclub just popped up out of nowhere, and that's where like all the germs and bacteria go to party. I'm like, yeah, that's basically what is it is. Well, well done, great metaphor. Um, and then the zip pops, and then they're like 
in the thing and there's just an open hole to the sky yeah and i was like oh is there just like a hole <laughs> It's like an for open them, hole for them, for them? Yeah. like yeah. because like you pop, it's like bloody, right? Yeah, like you <laughs> like, pop it in, you're like, oh, it's whatever. You're like, hmm. but like thinking of it as like an open hole, I was like really <laughs> disturbed by that for some reason. I don't know why. It's just like, oh. I, I did love, however, the fact that like this movie is so it's dated for two reasons. And it's because they make reference to like when he's like, when they're dancing in the club, he's like, you never got jiggy with it. I was like, okay, that's very dated. <laughs> but the fact that like the group that they're singing is a kid rock, kid rock, kidney rock. Kidney <laughs> rock. Yeah. I was like any, this movie could have taken place any time period. It would have, it would have stand the test of time. But the fact that you have that phrase jiggy and kid, <laughs> and rock, kid rock is like, it, it just, it just solidifies when this movie was made. Like, uh, early two thousands. Yeah. Maybe that was Will Smith's line. Yeah, they probably wrote it for him, and then <laughs> and they're like, like, "Oh, we'll just leave it in." Jiggy's still cool. Jiggy's still cool. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. But they had to cut those scenes down because they were like, "It's too gross for kids." Yeah, yeah. I would imagine. I don't know what what that would have been. I mean, the 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 Zid explosion is like what five frames. Like it is so fast. Like yeah. I'm sure they they probably just lingered on it. They probably, the toenail was probably like real. Like maybe they got like really close, close in on it like, or something. Um, got real gross and the vomit the vomit is just the picture because you don't actually see it happen yeah well the scripter probably just says and then zip pops and (laughs) nothing else (laughs) and they're like all right and they they filmed it it's just this glorious explosion (laughs) oh my god this is so disgusting and that's what they had to cut (laughs) it's Uh, 20 minutes of the movie i have never had like a zit pop on its own (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that'd be really weird, like, right? It, well, it was in such a place, though. Like, if he probably just, like, furrowed yeah, his maybe brow, his maybe that was just like, yeah. It's like, mm, and he oh. was kind of sitting there squeezing it. Like, yeah. Please. Yeah. So they probably had to play, yeah. but And, like, the sound effect <laughs> is, but then, like, when it, like, the sound effect when it lands on her lip oh. and she's trying to, she's trying to wipe it off and it's, like, all, <laughs> I was, like, that was so gross. It was so fucking gross. <laughs> So none of those, like, the, none of that cut stuff, none of that cut stuff is available. I, I can't find any of it. Good. Yeah. I don't want to watch it. The I deleted don't scenes. Watch more of the zip pop. Uh, the deleted scenes on YouTube are more uh, animated stuff. When uh, Drix first comes, he goes with Osmosis to the cornea. And he's like, it's like a viewing, like, over a canyon kind of thing. And they're looking out oh, through his eyes. And seeing what he can see mm-hmm. and like they have a, he's like, this is what we're here for, Frank. And he's looking at himself in the mirror and um, the runny nose bit where, where the dam breaks and they kind of fly out the, 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 through the, all the snot. Mm-hmm. Um, it actually, it dangles from his nose for a little bit and they're inside the dangling uh, snot bubble oh. <laughs> and this was apparently the original pitch of the movie um, and so they're like oh my god if we leave we'll die you know if we're not inside Frank and um, and then as he kind of like sniffs they grab onto his nose hairs <laughs> and then they're just holding on to his nose hairs and then um uh, there's a whole moment where Bill Murray's picking his nose and so the fingers sitting there like rubbing against him and <laughs> and so that sequence is a lot longer. Yeah. Um, so they just they just basically had to cut out a lot of They just like, changed it to like him humor. just like <laughs> Yeah, he just oh that's yeah. disgusting too. He just sniffs his big booger back <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um and then so speaking of the uh the dangly bit and he goes <laughs> he goes down there. So they he, they need to get there like somewhere around the stomach or something like that. But they, he's like the guy. We got to get to the dangly bit, the the uvula, and so it kind of just like they jump from wherever they are to there. But in the movie, it act or the deleted scene, it actually shows that they go into his stomach and trigger his heartburn reflex, <laughs> and then they go into his like stomach and it and it shoots them off like a rocket ship. And so they're just like, like sitting the in the car going. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> As they fly up, and that's how they get there so fast. Gotcha. Uh, the dangly uh, bits. The dangly bits. <laughs> that was so funny. One of the one of my other favorite jokes in this movie is they're like you know touring through like the city hall of Frank or whatever, and they walk past a statue, and it says "Our Founder," and it's just a sperm. <laughs> Did you catch that? I missed it. That's so I fucking missed funny. It. There's a bunch of signs there's, like that. There's that just are like, like very... so many random little like hidden Easter egg <laughs> oh, jokey. I also things. liked his joke too, and he was like, "My great granddad." 
uh, came over on the umbilical cord. <laughs> I, I thought that was so funny. Yeah, there's no like the the jokes in this are <laughs> top notch. <laughs> top notch jokes. Uh, because of some very stupid directors guild rules, the Fairly Brothers have sole directing credit. I wondered about that because I saw the the credits and it, it says directed by Fairly. Cool. Mm-hmm. Even and though they directed like twenty five percent. Yep, animators are un, are under a separate guild, including writers for animation. They're they're not part of the writers guild. Is there an improv guild? <laughs> There's got to be some sort of no. maybe. <laughs> no, they're just making it up as they go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get out! Get out of this podcast. That's why you're part of the guild. <laughs> so it's just kind of. Kind of sucks because they don't get the kind of the credit. If yeah. if you if you like the movie or you think it was a really good movie, like they don't get the credit as much as the Fairly Brothers do. Um. So what are how are they credited? Are they credited as like animation directors and yes. like the, the big director. old scrawly scrawl? No, it's it's in the like oh, Fairly Brothers written by and then like animated directed by or something like the direction. It's a little footnote and uh, also animated <laughs> yeah. by these guys. Yeah, asterisk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go to end of credits. And they helped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, some random stuff, some random things. Uh, the voice of the police chief, who I was just like, oh, it's just good voice actor there, yeah. is Joel Silver, who is the producer, who's like a mega producer. He did like the Matrix trilogy, all of Shane Black's movies. Yeah. Oh, shit. I don't, and he's uncredited in the movie. I don't know why. Oh, interesting. <laughs> why he was the voice of the... He he's like, not even a producer on the movie. There was a lunch one day. So what happened was... <laughs> yeah. um, he, was he was at that lunch, lunch and he goes, hey, you need a voice? He's just like, that sounds like some fun. He was That's he was he was walking through this the recording studio. Joel, <laughs> hey Joel, get in here. Some of the taglines. Mm-hmm. He's one cell of a guy. Wow, wow, wow. And everybody needs a hero. Cute. <laughs> uh, going back to what you were kind of saying about kind of it being a little racist, I actually found really lots of kind of think pieces about the movie that were saying that it was a little bit. Um, a way of introducing black culture to kids, which is really interesting because hmm. the three of the main, like big main characters in it are voiced by black people. Uh, uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne, Chris, Chris Rock. Rock, Brandy. Um, oh and God, like Brandy. all the music in it is very uh, rap. Uh, the the zit, like the club, like nightlife. Um, well, that and, was like, Kid Rock though. And, Oh, yeah, that's but, true. Yeah, because nothing says he's super yeah, yeah, like quite. black culture, like Kid Rock. <laughs> like Kid Rock says does. black culture, like um, some Kid Rock. No. no, like some music. The fact that it's like this action. Uh, it's a, a buddy, a buddy cop, buddy, buddy cop. cop. That's the movie. That's what I was like. But it's very kind of similar to uh, black exploitation movies, and and it was just kind of like hmm. there was, I was like I did not think about that. Yeah, it was very interesting. So, um, budget. Guess how much the movie cost. I mean, animation is really expensive. Seventy-five million? I don't know. Is that? I'm gonna go like twenty million. I'm gonna feel. I feel like they did it super low. Seventy. Ooh, Seventy wow. million. Yeah, circle gets the square. <laughs> yes. uh, well done. Guesses well done. on how much it grossed. Okay, I'm gonna stick with twenty million. <laughs> I'm gonna. T- um, I'm gonna say fifty million. I'm gonna say it lost money. Oh, I, in, I, I'm sure. I in did. the United States. Thirteen point five million. Yes. Oh, that's really bad. That's and only made lower. half a million outside of the United States, so a total of fourteen million worldwide. Hey, people Whoa. in Greece were watching it. <laughs> yeah. Greek Four TV. years too late. <laughs> yeah, I contributed to that half a million. Uh, so an enormous bomb. It's. I mean, it's not surprising because literally. This is that, well, it's like that, you were saying Lisa was just like, what is this movie? When did this movie come out? What's yeah. happening right now? It's the it's that movie that, that came and went and you never saw it yeah. and like don't remember it or know anything about it. Exactly. It, it opened seventh on its opening weekend behind new movies, American Pie 2, The Others, and Jurassic Park 3 and Rush Hour 2. And the only thing that was really competing against it for like kids' eyes was Princess Diaries. All of those beat it. The oh others came out two thousand one. That is quite a. That's a lot of. That's a lot of movies to compete with. Those are some movies, <laughs> right? Fifty five percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and which I think is a little harsh, um, especially this is their the 
the log line or what their like summation of it is the animation portion of osmosis is zippy and fun but the live action portion is lethargic how dare you yeah bill murray lethargic I did don't you know. not see that zit <laughs> Yeah, like <laughs> Molly Shannon's laughing. The part where he gets a cramp oh on the and he just falls. Oh on the yeah, st- he goes up three steps. We're gonna we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to move. Yeah. <laughs> Having watched this movie again for the first time, <laughs> um, I I thought that like I mean the, the the scenes you know live action animation they did flow together pretty well, mm-hmm. but in some way it did feel like I was watching two different movies and maybe that's just because some folks aren't used to mm-hmm. that where it's it's like you know you got the animated side and you have the live because action it, side because it's not like it's not like Roger Rabbit right, where, where they're, they're inter- inter- interacting because yeah. it's all it's all live action or all animated right the parts where they did overlap were kind of bizarre like the scene at the end where he's basically dying and his daughter's on that field trip and then she's like, I got to go see my dad. And then they're like outside of his body and they're trying to get back. How like the end battle takes place on a pair of fake eyelashes. Like I <laughs> like I was just watching that whole sequence going like, what the fuck is this choice? Like that's happening right now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, like why not? Why not make it? Uh, it could have been just its own uh, one eyelash. Yeah, that just fell off. It didn't need to be a fake right. eyelash. Like, it was kind of a strange because one. Because the the fact, right, that it's like they he gets osmosis gets back into Frank's body like through her tears. Yeah, where like she cries and it like go you know and that's how he gets back in. I'm like, oh, that makes sense, yeah. right? Because his daughter's like, no, dad, no, die, you know. But like the fake eyelash thing, a was gross because it's like pulling the glue strings like off of, <laughs> off of her yeah. eyelid. And be like, what? Like, she gets on the bus and she sits in front of her friends and they're like, oh, my God, like, we're going on a field trip. Like, hey, let's put makeup on you. And I was like, <laughs> on a on a school bus? Yeah. Are you insane? Those suckers, they bounce. Are you like, and then, of course, she comes off that school bus looking like she put her makeup on on a fucking school bus. Like, it looks janky as hell. Those fake eyelashes were like, Wah, like all over the fucking place. And it, I was like, what a just weird Choice. Choice. <laughs> yeah, where did this come up? The the field trip is weird. That was the only part that the was makeup, unbelievable, right? right? The makeup. Yeah, is weird. yeah. yeah. I was like, uh, that's I'm when he sorry. checked out. You do not put eyeshadow and eyeliner on on a goddamn school bus. You just don't do it. So that was the scene where the one scene where like the animated and the the live action yeah, kind of were, came together. Kind of, yeah, that's true. And it yeah. was like not well, very well done. <laughs> and so I get what you're saying yeah. about. It seemed kind of like two different movies. And Bill Murray is great, but like the daughter's like kind of eh. Oh, really? I thought she was great. Eh, she's fine. I thought she was crushing it. She should have got into improv (laughs) instead. (laughs) But the, I mean, like she's, I don't know, like she was fine. Um, But the, the animated portions of this movie are definitely the better the best part of this movie. Did that did that daughter go on to do anything else? That no, not really. No, she kind of. She became a makeup artist, actually. So. <laughs> She's like, I have to make up for this mistake. She was like, remember that experience I had. Well, going forward, so Sido and Crone. Crone. Uh, never directed a film again. Uh, both retreated to Ouch. just doing storyboard mm. art. Uh, uh, I think Sido kind of retired. Um, Crone just did um, recently the Spies one with Will oh, Smith. Will Smith and Tom Holland. Mark Hyman is actually a very in-demand script doctor, uh, mostly comedy punch-ups. Uh, he worked on Fairley's follow-up, the one where they're st- stuck to you. Um, Shanghai Noon, Freaky Friday, Dodgeball, Transformers. Uh, mm. He also, the, like, he has soul writing on uh, The Perfect Score, which was a movie that I need to watch again because I remember really liking it. It's about the kids. Uh, oh, the SAT cap- scores? Yeah, stealing the SATs. Uh, yeah. Captain America and Black Widow stealing the SATs. Um, show Dogs. And then he helped on How to Train Your Dragon. Mm. So he's very much part of it. Still working. Uh, the kids... Uh, kids WB show uh, Ozzy and Drix ran for two seasons. Osmosis Jones was voiced by Phil Lamar from ah, Futurama, ah. and Drix was Jeff Bennett. 
when I pulled him up, the first thing that came up was that he was Petrie in The Land Before Time. Oh, my God. Amazing. So that's kind of it for Osmosis Jones. But I want to go down this little bit of a rabbit hole on Warner Brothers animation. So they've been around forever. uh, Looney Tunes, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, And they started making movies uh, but they were the first set of movies were kind of bullshit. They were just compilations of Looney Tunes oh, stuff yeah. where they would just put them together and make little animations in between. And uh, but they were going, they were like full hog into TV, uh, TV series. Guesses on the first TV series by Warner Brothers. Um, uh, Tiny Toon Adventures. Tiny Toon Adventures. Good we're tiny, job. We're tiny, we're toony, we're all I'm a little, little loony, loony, and in this cartoony, cartoony we're invading your TV. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, and they're very, like, they, that's where they, they kind of started with that. I uh, would have Batman, guessed, I would have guessed that or Animaniacs. Batman, the animated series, and yeah. the a- Animaniacs. Yeah. And so that was uh, a handful of those start, and they've been doing everything uh, since... All the way up to now, which is totally different, Harley Quinn <laughs> and the yeah. Animaniacs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so come full circle yep. <laughs> with their their uh, projects. Warner Brothers Animation, the very first film technically is Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Oh, yes. In 93. Fuck, that's <laughs> so good. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think it's a little boring in parts, but okay. Yes. Uh, which was- I don't uh, care for the romance. Yeah, the romance is, drags it out. Um, that was originally going to be a straight to video and um, Warner Brothers decided that Batman was so popular that they'd put it to to um, to theaters and it turned into this whole nonsense where they couldn't get the release schedule right and so nobody saw it in theaters yeah. and so it bombed. Mm. Um, the film was made in eight months. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, after the monumental success of Lion King, uh, Warner Brothers started to invest heavily into features. Their first official feature was in 1996. 1996? With Warner Brothers characters. I don't even, what even? Space Jam. Space Jam. Oh, Space Jam. Oh my God, are we going to finally talk about Space Jam? We, okay. No, I don't. I I might actually Next make time. it its own, a, Next time. own thing. But... Oh, don't make me watch Space Jam. <laughs> We're going to talk about the Space Jam. Don't make me watch it. Jam, uh, Space but Jam. by and large, that movie was apparently like very different when they first started it. It was supposed to be very much darker. I didn't really go down it because I was kind of just kind of streamlining this. Uh, <laughs> then they then they merged with Turner Feature Animation, which released their first film, The Page Master. I remember seeing it in the theaters and just kind of going, oh, "Okay, all that, right, that well, was well. fine." <laughs> I remember Patrick Stewart was in it. <laughs> It's so it's so funny though that there's all these animation companies that are like trying to take on Disney and they just don't. They just don't have the hold. They don't have, yeah. like, everyone, everyone remembers Disney movies and can sing all the songs and know all the characters. And da-da. and then there's just all these, like, weird, that unless you were you were really into movies and you watched a lot of movies or you really liked animation, which is how I was. Yeah. And, like, I kind of assumed that every animated movie was a Disney movie. Exactly. Like, yeah. I thought, like, all of the... Like the Swan Princess and Land those. Before time. And, like, yep, yeah, I'm like, everything. oh, those are all Disney yeah. movies yeah. because I just watched every animated movie that was available. But there's all this weird shit that you're like, oh yeah, I forgot about that movie because all these companies like wanted to take on Disney and they just they just couldn't. Well, I mean, yeah, I, again, I'm only focusing on movies here yeah. um, for this discussion, but I mean, they made there were so many uh, made for TV, TV uh, or or straight to video stuff that. Again, you that were not Disney that right, were right. huge successes. But I mean, Brave Little Toaster. Right, that right. is such a. But I mean, in the, the weird like, the movie. feature market though, Brave Little Toaster. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, just thinking about like I loved it as a kid. Like I wanted that like <laughs> that heated blanket. Like I wanted that. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I, but like, of all the things to like be nostalgic over, as a kid, <laughs> I would never think to myself like, you know what, I'm gonna miss my toaster. Like, I don't know why that, I don't know why that toaster felt like he had such an affinity for this kid. Maybe maybe that's the maybe that's where everybody started their hoarding. 
Yeah. They, they all have attachments. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're all living. They're going to they're gonna feel <laughs> abandoned if I leave them. Yeah. And the lamp. Did I remember you, the lamp got struck by lightning. Oh, that was sad. Do you remember the sequel, The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars? No. No. <laughs> and there's like Brave Little Toaster to the Rescue. Like I just looked yeah. up I am, on IMDb. Yeah. The Brave, it's like, it's like nope. a weird franchise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So after the merger, Turner's second finished film... Cats don't dance. Oh, cats don't dance. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> you say these names of these movies are like, oh, yeah, that was a thing. That was, that was a, a thing. movie. That's what I'm yeah. saying. We're here to jog. We're here to poke your nostalgia yeah, yeah. part of your brain. Uh, 1997. I love Cats Don't Dance. I love it. No one else has ever fucking seen this movie. And I, yes. I remember the songs i sing the song that like darla darla dimple darla dimple she's like um she's like a shirley temple movie star where she's like you know a a little kid diva a little kid diva and she's like just evil fucking evil (laughs) and she sings this song that is just so good called big and loud and i just love it (laughs) yes you have you have seen that lots of times wow uh so originally that movie was supposed to be a michael jackson hybrid film when oh my it first started, uh, I'm, I don't was, know what that even means. He was going to produce it and star in it and do the choreography for it. He was going to be the dancing cat? Mm, yes. That's a very so, different movie. Okay. So the reason the film is about cats, speaking of Harley Quinn and that joke I told you to remember last <gasps> night, where there's a joke where Joker and Harley are talking and they're like, oh, we're going to do, we're going to remake Casablanca with cats. <gasps> cats it's going to be Casablanca. Yeah. So the reason the film is about cats is Warner Brothers Productions, all the way back from Casablanca in the 40s to Music Man in the 60s, uh-huh. <laughs> the cast and crew would feed all these wild cats. <laughs> and it created like this huge problem <laughs> that they had just cats in their, the, the behind the studios <laughs> for decades. Just, wow. Just, just like roaming, roaming wild feral cats, cats yeah. <laughs> at Warner Brothers Studios. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's insane. Magical. And so they decided to make a movie about them that are about trying cats to dance. In this, yeah, because <laughs> trying whole, to make it big. Yeah, they're like, we're trying to make it in the movie business. <laughs> yeah. So weird. Um that's, that's directed amazing. by some dude. Mark Dindell, who did Oh, Emperor's New Groove. Emperor's New Groove. Yeah. Uh his first directing project was actually the Nazi propaganda film in The Rocketeer. Oh, oh I yeah. was like, I was like in in, in like just, life. Just yeah, a, he just, just directed life, Nazi yeah. propaganda. His first, yeah. <laughs> He's just like join the Nazi party. Yeah. Uh, Do you want to be part of superior race? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are you Aryan as well? <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> no. I mentioned I mentioned that movie, and uh, Joe Johnston directed that, and that's why he was such a good pick for first Captain America movie. Uh, the songs were by Randy Newman, and the choreography for Cats Don't Dance was Gene Kelly. Ah. That Going makes a lot of sense because there's Mr. a lot of tap dancing in Randy that. Randy Newman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Throughout the production, the heads of Turner constantly wanted to change the film's era. Um, they were like, well, that's not hip anymore. We want to change it to hip hop and stuff like that. Uh, and they constantly had to fight that. No, the, I mean, like, the, the setting for that movie is perfect. It's like the golden age of <laughs> yeah, Hollywood. Yeah, exactly. They're you like, know, they get, don't get it. You got your tap yeah. dancing cats. You got your Shirley Temples. Uh, the budget of that movie was $32 million. Guess how much it made to make Jenny Ray so in love with it. Um, well, I'm pr- the only person who saw it, so it made the one movie ticket. <laughs> $7.50. <laughs> Seven dollars and fifty cents. Wait, was, well, my whole family would have gone, so probably like, <laughs> like thirty dollars, maybe a hundred dollars. So it was, it was thirty-two million. Uh-huh. I'm going to say it made twenty-five. I'm going to say it made fifteen million. Only released in the United States, three point five million. Oh, I'm oh. so much more generous than that actually <laughs> happened. <laughs> right? That yeah. No, okay. Literally, no one has seen that movie. Like, I'm the only person. Yes. That I know. Okay, so their next film, that where they combine the talents of uh, Turner and Warner Brothers, um, and it was the second film for them, was Quest for Camelot, which we mentioned earlier. That's right. Mm-hmm. 1998. Uh, and 
Production was only a few months in when half the crew was pulled over to help finish Space Jam. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, look, you guys, this movie is going nowhere. It's fucking yeah. bullshit. Please come help us finish this other also bullshit movie. <laughs> yeah. But that's more profitable because it has Michael Jordan in it. Just everybody come over. Uh, a year in, they cast Christopher Reeve as King Arthur in it. Um, and this is actually after his accident, which oh. is really oh, interesting. interesting. Um, but he could still voice act. Yeah, and you know, it's just kind of uh, it was kind of surprising. I would assume it would have been before. Hmm. Um, but the president of Warner Brothers Feature Animation forces a story change. Um, originally, it was supposed to be uh, the quest for the Holy Grail, mm-hmm. and then they changed it to Excalibur. And the the president forced this change, and the co-director and his pr- uh, producer wife uh, leave or are fired. Unsure which one, um, because they're of... just like huge Holy Grail stands. What reasons? Why were they would leave? Creative differences. Creative differences. Creative differences. Um, they were like, listen, we think the Holy Grail is really important. The <laughs> yeah. entire crux of our involvement <laughs> yes. in this movie is re- is dependent yes. on this Holy Grail. So they are fired or they leave. and uh, I mean, which, either way they leave. I yes. Guess. <laughs> they, uh, but, but leads to a, an exodus of lots of talent. Oh. Um, so all these people leave the production. They... Try to pick it all up. Reeve was unavailable for all the changes, so they recast him with Pierce Brosnan. Budget of forty million. Guesses on the gross on this one. Four. Um, one point two million. <laughs> Twenty two million. Ah, oh, so off. with a worldwide total of thirty eight million. So it still lost money. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one but other random joke thought. about this. Uh, so the two-headed dragon is voiced by Eric Idle and uh, Don Rickles. Eric oh, Idle man. doesn't remember voicing. <laughs> no I, way. I, I saw that ju- on Twitter the I other day. I was drunk at the time. <laughs> someone, someone was like, oh, I loved you in this. And he, you should reply, I don't remember doing it. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> I don't remember doing it. <laughs> oh, Eric. <laughs> uh, their third film, Iron Giant. Um, directed by uh, Brad Bird, which I'm not going to go into because that has a whole history and people love that movie. Uh, so if, it is, if, it's, if it's a shit show, I don't know. Budget of 70 million. Guesses on gross. 400 million. I'm going to say it made 45. 23 million. Oh. <sighs> only released in the United States. I'm I'm really striking out on this guessing game. Yeah. So, I assume that would have made a shit ton more money because like everybody loved yes, that movie. Exactly. Like he was like even like Ted Lasso. Classic. Like everybody's got to watch it, right? So yeah, it, it's a cult classic. Right. Because nobody saw it. Uh, <laughs> so the then they have seen. Osmosis Jones, mm-hmm. which only 70 million, cost 70 million and only makes 14 million. So Warner Brothers Features is not doing great. Just hemorrhaging yeah. money. Hemorrhaging money. So after Osmosis Jones and Iron Giant failed, uh, the feature animation drastically pulls back the animation department and says, okay, one last chance. One last chance to make a movie uh, that would work. Looney Tunes back in action. Oh. 2003. That's that, this, this is their last chance? This was their last Looney chance. Looney Tunes back in action <laughs> yes. is their last chance? And they fucked it up. <laughs> they yeah. fucked it up. Originally started as a sequel to Space Jam, um, Michael Jordan was not interested, uh, but a producer <laughs> lied that he was to keep the film in production. <laughs> that oh. is... Amazing. So this hap- this goes on for like a couple of weeks or so before someone figured this out. <laughs> yeah, they're like, was he? I oh. saw Michael Jordan on set for a Hanes commercial, and <laughs> yeah. he had no idea what you he were didn't talking know what about. You were yeah. talking about. Um, with him gone, they attempted Space Jam with Jackie Chan and Race Jam with Jeff Gordon. Neither of Neither of those went anywhere. Wait, hold on. The Jackie Chan ver- version was also just called Space Jam? No, Spy Jam. Oh, did I say Space Jam? You said yeah. Space Sorry. Jam. Spy Jam with Jackie Chan. See, it should have been Space Chan. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> they're they're terrible at naming these movies. Spy Jam? No, Space, Space Jam. Space doesn't have anything to do with basketball. <laughs> it's not going to be called Basketball Jam. That makes sense. But yeah. then Space Jam should have been like, I don't know, Neil Armstrong or some shit. Yeah, space. But look, I, jam. The jam I would guys. watch. I would have watched Space Chan. That sounds great. Jackie Chan in space. I'm there. 
Uh, so, but Bugs Bunny? Warner Brothers still wanted to keep Looney Tunes relevant um, because Space Jam was actually quite the big hit. Um, it cost a lot of money, and it it made I don't I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it um, made enough in the United States. But it did really well overseas. So Warner Brothers is like, we're gonna keep uh, Looney Tunes relevant. Mm-hmm. Um, so they greenlit Back in Action. Joe Dante from oh. uh, from Exorcist. No. Nope. Shh. I know we've talked about this jabroni before. And you talked about him earlier. Gremlins. Gremlins. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my okay. God. Uh, considered one of the nicest guys in Hollywood. Uh, wanting to, he, he signed on because he was a huge fan of Mel Blanc. And um, he wanted to make the anti-Space Jam movie because he hated it. And he was mm. just like, they, they bastardized the characters. Like, they didn't stay true to the characters. Yeah. Uh, the whole filming of this movie, he said, was a grim experience and the longest year and a half of his life. Uh, he was constantly fighting Warner Brothers about preserving Bugs Bunny and crew um, in their true form. Like mm. they were constantly like, oh, uh, Bugs Bunny, he needs to do hip hop dancing. And he's like, Bugs would never do that. Like he, <laughs> he, he was sitting there just kind of, he was constantly fighting them. And he says the the beginning, middle and end are not what he intended. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> the beginning, middle and end and also all the parts in between <laughs> yeah. those parts. I just I, I can't stand behind this movie. OK, what is the plot of Looney Tunes back in action? I don't think I've ever seen this. I've never seen it either. I remember when it came out and I was kind of like, I d- that looks really terrible. I did not have a, the same like appreciation Robert. for uh, Brendan Fraser that I do now. <laughs> so I, I, at the time I was like, oh, I don't want to see this. And like, oh, I kinda, Brendan I, well, Fraser it's, it's, in Brendan that? Fraser's, it's live action, uh, Brendan Fraser, Jenna Elfman, which to me at the time felt kind of like... Oh shit, maybe I was... have seen this movie actually. It's starting... <laughs> and Steve Martin is the bad guy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's starting to come back to me. I mean, I oh, don't, really? again, like I don't remember oh, yeah. anything it... about it, but like I definitely have seen this movie at some point in my life. Anyway, there was also Warner Brothers constantly wanted to change the jokes in finished animated sequences. So they brought in all these fucking writers to write jokes that would fit the mouths of Ugh. the a- already animated characters. What a waste of time. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. That's not how it, making things works, okay? <laughs> Uh, you can't fucking like ADR. What were they doing? Like cutting to like behind shots of like people's heads and then just ADRing it and then cutting the <laughs> and then the animated characters just standing there blinking while the other yeah. character who they're showing the back of their head does an ADR line. I, Shenanigans. It's so stupid. Um, interesting fact. The last film scored by Jerry Goldsmith, who I absolutely love. He's a very underrated composer. He did Gremlins. Mm. Uh, Alien, Ghost in the Darkness, Secret Ooh. of Nim. Oh my God. Uh, Star Trek First Contact, which yes. is one of my favorite oh, themes that's in there. That's so good. Uh, he did The Burbs, which is a really funny parody of his score, Patton. <laughs> um, hmm. And he most, everybody would know him because he does the Universal logo. Uh, so so back- his, the very last movie he scored was Looney Tunes Back yeah. in Action. Oh, that's how sad for him. I know. Okay, so Looney Tunes back in action cost eighty million. How much did it make? Twenty. Forty-five. Twenty million. Oh, yes, oh, finally got one. Finally. Got one. <laughs> yeah, I've seen the trends here. I've seen the trends. <laughs> He's he just beautiful minded that shit. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> uh, that was Carried just in the U.S. Worldwide, it made sixty-eight million. So oh, yeah, another bomb. Listen, but I was closer to the worldwide growth because <laughs> it was crushed by Elf and Brother Bear, which is what they were competing against oh, for okay. kids. And so Warner Brothers halts its feature animation division, and it wasn't revived until ten years later as Warner's Animation Group, and their first film uh, since Back in Action was the Lego Movie. Oh. Holy shit! So, so a lot of steps up from that. Yeah, yeah. right. That's funny you say that because like I guys, remember it seeing. It took ten years, but we figured it out. <laughs> Finally, well, it's yeah. funny you say that out. because I remember seeing the Lego Movie, and it's like by Warner Animation Group, and I thought to myself, 
What else have they done? Have I <laughs> yeah. seen anything else by Warner Animation Group? Not for ten years. Not for ten years. Yeah, yeah. Not but since they still the did. Space but they still did DC stuff in between that. Yeah, they, I'm, yeah. I'm just talking about the movies. The, yeah, like, they did all those the the DC animated stuff. Yeah, like they they were involved in all that. Which are all which wise. for the most part, a lot of those are really good. Yeah, if I've you seen like some of them. if you like yeah. Batman and and DC stuff, like some of those are actually really spectacular. Yeah. But that was just like that was the animation division was like, yeah, we're trying, we're trying. Blah, 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 and they're just hitting their heads on every stair on yeah. the way down. Flat tired. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so that was Warner Brothers Animation. So uh, was any of that or Osmosis Jones worth it? I mean, I never saw any of them. Yeah. <laughs> the Quest for Camelot. I didn't see Cats Don't Dance. Don't even speak ill of Cats Don't Dance. I'm not speaking ill of it. Cats I'm just Don't Dance I... is a thousand percent worth it. Okay, I'll tackle the the first one, Osmosis Jones. <sighs> even though I do like this movie and it's like fun and silly and ridiculous and just gross and whatever, I, like it's kind of a like blip. Like it's kind of a, like <laughs> like it didn't really like achieve anything. Yeah. Like it didn't like change the face of animation. It obviously didn't do anything for Warner Animation Studios or whatever. And so I kind of feel like no, because like there's not anything from that movie that's just like, holy shit, that movie was is like a classic. It changed animation. It it's made some star super famous. Like everybody in there was already kind of famous. Hmm. Um yeah. but like, you know, maybe for the puns. Maybe. <laughs> Just for that one testicle joke. Just for, yeah. just for that the was, that's, that was, that was worth and it for sperm, me. And the sperm yeah. joke, our founder. <laughs> yeah. Worth it. I mean, I think Osmosis Jones and all those other films, I guess you could spin it and say that, yes, they all were worth it because it paved the way and, like, built, you know, something uh, like to, to things where we got, like, the Lego movie. Like, they... I mean, they they've had they, all those they're built on the failures of yeah of the before on the, the yeah. bones of <laughs> <laughs> of the Looney Tunes <laughs> yeah and then we get like and like granted like the Lego Movie was great Lego Batman I thought was also great Ninjago meh uh, the Lego Movie Part Two slightly better than the Ninjago but like <laughs> is that all they've done there since Slightly then is like is the an- Space War- Jam <laughs> a and new the legacy new space, and the new Space Jam. <laughs> Quinn was really excited to see that. And then he like watched it and he's like, yeah, that was dumb. <laughs> my, my 10 year old was like, yeah, that was dumb. He's like, but Rick and Morty were in it. They had a cameo. I'm like, oh, so he just showed me that part. I'm like, all right, that's all I need to see. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Because apparently it wasn't necessary. Because like Space Jam was very much like he goes to Looney Tunes, Looney Tunes land. land. Yeah. And like, but this I guess. This is just Warner Brothers. Yeah, just, just, yeah. Just throwing everything at it. Like it's a where's Waldo of just nonsense in the of background. Ca- of, of characters. Because in theory, they could have, if it was really a big hit, which it was not, they could have made another movie in the Warner Brothers universe with Jackie Chan. <laughs> and then you would have had Space, space Chan. <laughs> Welcome to the Space, space Chan. <laughs> listen. <laughs> look, look, listen. And join me for a moment. In celebrating how much I want to see Space Chan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say I will say that Osmosis Jones for me I think is very funny and very worth the watch. Um, I th- I think it's very clever. Uh, I think there's a lot of it, it moves really quickly. I think I think the daughter father daughter stuff is actually very cute, even though it has a really weird implication in there about how their mom died of just being unhealthy. Yeah. That was just kind of strange. And uh, the voice acting, David Hyde Pierce is pretty great as the straight man. But for me, the, the ace in the hole was uh, Lawrence Fishburne. That's what I was going to say. Like, I, if you, oh, if yeah. he, I didn't Holy know that shit. was him, like, I would have never assumed it was. He does such a great job as that character. And, like, his introduction is fucking evil and, like, I, he just crushes it. horrifying. Yeah, he's, he's just scary so as good hell. At it. Yeah. He's like, oh, geez, he wants to beat his record of how fast he can mm. kill, kill people. people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like, so messed my up. My record is 48 hours. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I think you should see it for um, that. It's not it's not a great movie by any means, but it is a it's, it's a fun. It's one. fun. Yeah, yes. yeah. That's the that's the problem. It's not, is, it's not terrible. By is it sometimes with these like was it worth it? So you have to consider, like you know, you hear about like all the shit that went into it and how much money it lost, and so sometimes you have to consider like the cultural impact of it. Mm-hmm. 
And like, I just feel like this has, even though, yeah, like standalone, like worth the watch, kind of a fun movie. It'll like take you down memory lane for an hour. You can talk about the gross zit scene um, and be grossed out by it and whatever. But like there, there wasn't, it didn't like, there was no cultural impact from this. And I don't know if all these failed movies, right? necessarily like led to the lego movie oh yeah it feels kind of like i was just really trying to like yeah spin a good thing out of this because there is a whole 10 year gap (laughs) yeah that's what i'm saying it kind of just feels like it's a new tight new name well i mean they obviously kind of came back and were like where did we fail before but like by that point it was probably all new people and all new right and it wasn't like these these exact same people looked back on their mistakes and then the lego movie was born it was just like no like they were like we're abject failures that make making animated movies apparently let's just stop doing that (laughs) and then and just keep making our animated tv series and harry potters and whatever the hell else they were making for that 10 years and then um you know and then come back with the lego movie lick their wounds yeah yeah uh so i would say lastly um via this movie i think i think it's very interesting watching this movie right now as we kind of touched on at the beginning how kind of weirdly prevalent it was um and seeing like the daughter crying that her dad is dying on the table because of some stupid decisions um get vaccinated y'all yes I, I mean, our 5G is great. We're vaccinated and our signal strength is amazing right now. <laughs> but uh, one thing that gets lost a lot is that it's not about you. It's about so you don't carry it and give it to someone else. Yeah. That's the point. That that point does come across in the movie where like where the daughter's like, please be healthier. Mm-hmm. Like, I need you to take care of yourself. And he's like, Ma, we're fine. And then he kind of realizes like, oh, wait, I have a fucking kid here that I got. It. Like, I have to do this not for for me, but like for her. She needs yeah. a dad. Yeah. And so that theme definitely comes through at it, the end. It hits a lot harder now than yeah. it did then. Get vaccinated. <laughs>